All right. All right, everyone, if you are joining us today for our webinar with Brandon, congratulations, you made it. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're going to we're gonna start in just a few moments. We're going to give uh, some of the latecomers a chance to, to get here so we can start uh, and they can uh, experience the whole thing. Brandon is here with us, uh, but we will begin in just a moment. So thanks for joining us and hang on for just a minute, all right? And while we're waiting, I'll give you a couple of uh, housekeeping details just so you know this session is being recorded. So if you uh, miss out on anything, you'll be able to check it out on YouTube. The recording should go up uh, right after it's over or later today, depending on how fast YouTube can process it for us. Uh, but this recording will be on YouTube. And uh, so feel free to share that with uh, any colleagues you like. Uh, at the end of the presentation, Brandon is going to have time for some Q&A. So anytime during the talk, if you have any questions, type them into the chat and we'll get to them uh, at the end. Or if it's something really pressing, I'll jump right in and let Brandon know that we have an important question to address immediately. Um, and if this is your first time attending a, a GoSkills webinar, we welcome you. Thank you for coming. Uh, and if you want to learn more about GoSkills, Here's our URL, it's goskills.com. Uh, we have all kinds of different on-demand courses that we offer to help you start achieving your goals today. So um, let me give everyone one more minute just to make sure that everyone is here and uh, we'll start the webinar momentarily. All right, I think we're good to start. I see we have a group already joining us. Thank you for coming. Uh, once again, let me give that quick intro. Uh, my name is Dan Gorgone. I'm a course producer here at GoSkills. I'm very happy to be hosting our webinar. Our webinar is how to manage remote employees and our speaker is Brandon Schaefer. So Brandon, thanks for coming. Let me give you the, the intro that you deserve. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it sounds like I'm dooming you. I know, right? Brandon is, is, he's so fantastic and you guys are going to love this, this webinar today. Brandon is an established corporate business strategist and he's got years and years of experience helping different companies streamline their business processes. Uh, and that includes employee engagement and management, which is something many entrepreneurs and managers are dealing with right now. So Today, Brandon is going to share 11 actionable tips to manage your team remotely. Uh, once again, this session will be recorded. So if you miss anything and you want to share it, this will be on YouTube on our channel uh, later today. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this session, go ahead and type them into chat. And if we don't get to them immediately, we'll have them at the end of the chat. We'll make sure Brandon has a chance to go through them at the end. Uh, and so our goal right here is to jump right in. We're going to hand things off to Brandon. Brandon, thanks so much for coming. Go ahead and take it away, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, just like everybody else said, I am getting used to this different world, this online world, this talking to a computer practically seven or eight hours a day and sometimes in Zoom meetings and webinars and in, 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 in Teams meetings. You know, uh, I, it's probably just like you, I, it's tough to 
know where to look. You know, I don't know if I'm looking at the camera perfectly, if something in the background isn't light. You know, obviously I'm working from home, probably like you are as well. And we have kids, a dog, and this, and you're just, I'm kind of biting my tongue the whole time before I get on here. To, I, I tell my kids, ah, just be quiet, be quiet. You know, probably just like you. And, and the reason why I'm telling you all this and sharing this is because you can probably relate, right? Um, somebody walks in the room with laundry, whatever else it's, but the one thing I want you to know with whatever I share is that I'm a human being. Everything that I share may not relate to you directly, but I'm sure if it doesn't sting you today, and when I say sting, that means really relate to you in a, in a deep manner. I'm sure one morning or one evening before you go to bed or some circumstance or situation is going to occur in your life where you're like, oh man, I remember that guy from Ghost Skills. I, I remember that webinar. What was his name? What was his name? Oh, that Dan was a present. I remember Dan, but who was the guy? Oh, it was, it was Brandon. Yes, that's it. That's it. I remember what he said. And that was true. And the reason why I tell you that is because people tell me that all the time. They go, Brandon, when I, when I heard that presentation that you put on or when you were at that public speaking engagement, it really doesn't, did, it really didn't resonate with me. But over time, it definitely did. And I wanted to thank you for it. So if you don't feel like you're getting the immediate punch from this webinar, go back, watch the replay, watch it on YouTube. Okay. Get engaged with Go Skills. Okay. Their LMS system is one of the best out there. I do not work for Go Skills. I do this as, as, as a partnership. I do not get paid for this, anything else like that. This is this is because I love the platform and I love the products and services that it provides. All right. So I highly recommend that. Also, this conversation is a two-way street. Yes, I'm on a webinar presenting. I know you probably get onto a lot of webinars and you hear people and they just blah, 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 blah. Right. The more you engage, if you have something, put it in the chat. Dan will stop. He's gonna he's gonna stop and say, like, hey, listen, Brandon, let, let's attack this right now. This is this is a symbiotic experience that we're going through here, it's definitely something that we want to extract and open up additional points beyond the 11 that I'm going to discuss, right? Because the way that I think may not be the way that you think, but our thinking together is going to make us all more powerful. So don't be shy, put yourself in the chat, ask a question, ask, hey, what, what technology can help us out with that? Anything along those lines. We will get that answer. You don't need to wait until the end. I highly recommend you stay around and watch watch the whole thing because um, we are going to go over a bunch of, of, of great, great topics here. And um, so let's let's just get in, into the bread and butter of it. Um, as you can tell, I'm, I'm pretty much a personable person and I'm going to smile. My body language is going to tell what's going on. I'm going to share some things that uh, definitely hit home for me personally because I'm currently going through that, through, through this organizational change. And then some may be tough for me to talk about. Some may be easier. You might see a big smile. Some may be, I start, might start doing some body language where I start choking myself out, you know, because uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pain in my life right now. But let's have some fun with it and uh, go over 11 ways. Yes, you heard it. 11 of the gazillion ways <laughs> that you can manage remote employees. So the first thing that I always like to do is set down guidelines, right? Everybody needs guidelines, especially someone like myself, right? Because I, my head goes to 10 different places at 10 different times with 10 different people. So for me, as a leader and as a person that's working remote as well, I need guidelines. So every customer, what, what we did when we started working remote is we segmented every um, organizational group into you know customer service or finance or sales into their own kind of buckets so instead of having corporate guidelines which we we always have corporate we always have corporate guidelines but we kind of really got much more specific with the guidelines per each group right? Because we wanted to deliver. We didn't want to go backwards during all of this, right? Our end goal was to, was to not come out way far ahead, not come out way too far back, but come out 
neutral or a little bit forward so that we didn't lose any ground. But we did. We were definitely weren't looking to to light the world on fire during this time of transition, either. We're looking to just stay budget neutral and just continue to drive that business, right? So setting guidelines definitely helps. Now I'll give you an example. In customer service, we needed to set specific guidelines so that everybody knew what they were supposed to do, when they were supposed to do it, and why they were supposed to do it. So. And this slide kind of just backs up what I was just talking about here. So if you're in customer service, and typically you spend a lot of time in a cloud platform, like a, a, a cloud help desk system. I'm blanking on the way. It's Fresh, FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the one. Um, Fresh Desk or one of, the, one of those ones that are one of one of the ones that are ton that are out there. Dan, if you want to jump in and help me out with one that you, you that, that you can remember, uh, that'd be great as well. But um, so in terms of customer service, we needed to set down like what what are the what are the guidelines, what are the expectations that people are expected to do when they're in that job? Like are you supposed to be online 24 hours a day, which is impossible? Are you supposed to be online within a couple minutes? Are you supposed to be online within uh, response time within a couple hours, you know? So we needed to all set all that type of stuff down, all right? So that had to do with the guidelines. In sales, what is the expectation for sales? And this goes to the expectations as well. So what are the expectations for our sales team? Are we expected to just, you know, get up when we want to in the morning? Are we expected to, um, you know, reach out to customers on a limited basis? Are we expected to even reach out to customers, right? So every group, every division had like a micro, a micro team to go in there, not micromanage them, but micro set up the guidelines and the expectations so that we all know what the heck is going on when, when we're supposed to do things and the value in doing that. So how do we do this all? We did this through proper technology. So you may use an old antiquated system. Using an old antiquated system when working remotely is going to make things very, very difficult for yourself. Now, I know there's a lot of companies out there that have held off on technology because they've been fine doing it the way that they want to do it. But coming from a technology background, there's no better time and there's no more imperative and more vital time than right now to enable your staff with the proper technology, right? So Salesforce, uh, Trello, Slack, copper.com, um, any of these types of tools, uh, teams, you know, any of these types of tools that you've been holding off to use, now is the time to use them because if you're going to set out guidelines, if you're going to set out expectations, you need to be able to back that up. So as an employee, you know, you're probably saying, well, how am I going to communicate with these people? How do I keep an eye on them? And working remotely is not about keeping an eye on them. It's about enabling them, right, by setting guidelines, by setting expectations and enabling them to do their job properly through the use of technology, all right? So let me stop here. I went over three points so far. Set the guidelines, set the expectations, and use the proper technology. Dan, do we have any question? Is there anything that you feel that we need to answer at this point before I move on to the next three? Well, I know one thing that, um, you know, with so many different suggestions about uh, tools and platforms that can be used. And I think that especially during this time, a lot of us get inundated with articles and blog posts and tweets and things about um, new tools and, and suggestions from people for moving to remote work. Um, but, you know, um, as powerful as those tools are, they're really only as powerful as I think um, people's understanding of how to use them, right? Like if you just kind of, if you kind of give like carte blanche to people and say, let's go ahead and let's try this and go ahead and let's try that. And, and, 
and um, you you throw out a whole bunch of tools without the proper training, then um, you're kind of creating a maelstrom for yourself and your team. Um, th if there's no organization or kind of vision from the top on the kinds of things that you want to accomplish and the kinds of projects that uh, or or goals that you want to set, um, without the proper training on how to use those tools, it, the 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 learning curve could be very steep, and uh, the time to get things done could be far extended, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure, and that actually leads into the next point, <laughs> which is provide training, right? Provide ongoing training. Go Skills is a great platform as well for this, and I'm just giving them a plug. This isn't included in here or anything else. It's not in the slide. You won't see it in the slide, but I'm just speaking from the heart here. And it is, you know, like to give somebody a job to do is one thing. You set the guidelines. You set the expectations. I understand that. But you need to, to continue to educate them, right? Because if you tell me to go plant a tree in my backyard, I'm probably going to dig a hole that's not deep enough, that's not wide enough, because I don't know any better. But if you tell me, Brandon, your tree is three feet tall, and it needs a 36-inch circumference hole, and it needs to be two feet deep, when you come out before I put that tree in, I can assure you that it's going to be to the exact specifications that you desire, because I'm an engaged I'm a happy employee and I'm willing to do what it works because I'm happy to have a job in this, in this environment. But it, the same goes for training and skills, enhanced training. Like right now is a great time for continued training, right? If you've been holding off on classes or anything else like that, take the extra time without inundating employees with useless, old, outdated information. But just like this, just like this webinar here, hey, share this webinar because everything that I talk about we're talking to mostly leaders here, but everything that I talk about, you can reverse out of here as a leader and feed it to your employees. If you just switch around the words a little bit, the, the employees, this presentation can be adapted for your employees as well, right? Not only for you as a leader. So switch around the words, reverse them, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So training, 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 online training, in-person training. One thing that I love to do is I love to get the different reps on the phone and different departments, on not on the phone, on what I say phone now, it's so natural. It's actually a, a Zoom meeting, a Teams meeting, or whatever platform you use. Get them on and listen to each other train the other. So assign one person of your crew. If you have a crew of 10 people in, in, in one division or one, one, one business unit, customer service, finance, or sales, get them on and assign one person, hey, um, Dan, I want you to train. I'm going to let you run this meeting and you train them on something that you know. I've had more knowledge transfer from internal sources than mostly any of the other sources because we're talking about what's relevant to our customers. We're talking about what's relevant to our environment, right? And people will listen to their peers much more than they're going to listen to somebody from the outside unless they're positioned as some crazy expert you know, up, upon that. And in fact, I'd say listening to your peers and getting training from your peers is one of the, is, is actually more effective than 99% of the stuff that you can do out there. All right. Um, so through all this, right, we're training the guidelines, the expectations, we need results, right? Everything that we do needs to focus around results. We're not looking for busy time here when it comes to managing remote employees. If an employee can work two hours a day and accomplish what somebody else can do in five hours a day because they have a certain skill set, because they've invested in their time, they man they've invested in learning, they've invested in educating themselves in your products and services, they've invested their passion in providing the best, best experience that they can for you as a leader and for their company as a whole, you know, it's not like, hey, push more work on them. It's, hey, listen, we see that you're doing outstanding results. 
So this is what I circle back to the next training thing. Let's get you on. What are you doing? Share with the rest of us what you're doing to get these results to finish so quickly, right? Because everything that we do has to be driven based upon what type of results we need to get. So always, always focus on the results, especially in the remote. No micromanaging. I think I'll bring this up later too. Um, but let the employees shine. You know, there are going to be people that rise to the occasion here, and there are going to be people that let you down. The people that rise to the occasion, utilize them to help build up the people that are that are underperforming, right? And then just guide them, say, hey, listen, I know this transition is tough for you. I know it's tough for you to pay attention to, when, when we're doing these meetings. But what do you recommend we do? What is the learning path that you would like? Is there anything that you'd like to learn? And a, directly, sometimes you need to segment this piece out, the results piece out on an individual basis and, and ask the person straightforward, what would you like to learn? And just get them registered to learn that, whether it's whether that class be on GoSkills, whether it be on any of the other platforms available out there, or whether it be from, from a speaker uh, series or anything else like that. But just ask them, how can we help you get better results? This is not about micromanaging you and wondering what you're doing and stuff like that. This is about helping drive better results. So the next one is provide clear instructions. I know for me, I'll share a quick story. I go to Ikea. I bring home a piece of furniture. I want to put the piece of furniture together without looking at the directions. So I start. But what happens is I have half of it together and I realized I'm missing or I didn't include two vital parts when I go to put the leg to the main body, right? Now I need to take a part because I didn't have, because I didn't listen to the instructions. It took me twice as long because I had to take everything back apart. And as a leadership team, we must provide clear instructions because if we're going to be accountable for our time and we're going to focus on the results, we need to provide the directions that employees can use to get to where they want, where we'd like them to go and to get to where we need to be as a company as fast as possible. And providing clear instructions or clear directions is the easiest way to do that. Do not overlook the instructions piece. The more detailed, the better. <laughs> the, the more specific, the better. Hey, Brandon. No. Yeah, yeah, I think I can I can share a, like a personal experience with this too, and yeah, please. This is something that like I've I've been a remote worker for uh, probably like six years now, and doing uh, different gigs where I you know I'm a course producer at GoSkills, but in in other places too, I've done similar jobs and I've worked with video and putting things together, and of course every every company has different processes uh, that they follow. Some of them are. Uh, well documented. Some of them are documented within systems. Sometimes they're tossed into a Word doc or, or a Google doc. Uh, and other times it's just um, word of mouth type uh, stuff. It's where you sit in an office and you ask someone, well, I mean, so how do, what do you do in order to, to finish this thing here? And so, oh, you, well, you do this thing and this thing and then this other thing. And so, then you kind of, you put it in the back of your mind, all right, all right I'm going to remember that next time. And so, that uh, you know, sharing the uh, sharing of the information and um, kind of happens uh, naturally in that way. Uh, but in a remote team, we don't have the luxury of sitting next to someone and tapping on their shoulder or putting your head over the the cubicle wall and saying, "Hey, uh, how does that go again?" And so, tools like Trello and Basecamp for me have been really huge advantages for documenting processes that uh, need to be followed repeatedly. Uh, it can be everyday things. It could be occasional things. But having the, that checklist where you can give it to anyone, I mean, almost anyone, and they can go through and start checking things off and they can see very clearly the sequence of events. Um, it, it's a huge help. And especially a tool like Basecamp, I especially like because you can, you can go right in and you can add screenshots of things like, 
because so much of like what we do is online. It's like, so you go into this app, you go up to this menu, you click this thing, you do that and you're like, all right, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> but, but with more detailed instructions, exactly what you're saying here, if you provide visuals as well, when you can, I've found that it is a huge help because it goes a long way towards kind of sharing that knowledge and establishing that, that expertise with people when they do it the first time and the second time and they keep going. And then you can even refine the process after that. Yeah. A hundred thousand percent. I don't think you're looking at the next slides here, but your, your conversation is leading directly into the, in, in the next point, which is, which is awesome. Is that it's actually perfect timing. Um, standard operating procedures, right? SOPs, the hidden word. The first thing that we always do when we work with a new client is we go in there and we say, what are your SOPs? 90% of the people we talk to say, what, what do you mean? We say, what are your standard operating procedures around this process? So customer service, customer calls in, right? They call in. Where is that information going? You know, so a customer calls into a person that's sitting in a living room or sitting at home working remote at a kitchen table, dining room, where, wherever they're working. What is the standard operating procedure? And this leads back to the, to the beginning of the conversation with, with setting the guidelines, setting the expectations, customer service, finance, putting, these, putting each um, bucket, putting, putting each business unit in its own bucket Right? What is what is a standard operating procedure around each of these units? So a person calls in to customer service, right? What system are they putting it into? Are they putting it into a into a tracking system? Are they entering that information into a CRM, such as Salesforce? Is it creating a duplicate? Are they checking for duplicates? Do they have a, a, a duplicate checker on the back end of the system? Right? So these are all standard operating procedures. A customer, uh, again, I'll, I'll continue to go on this. Customer calls in, information gets entered in, in the CRM. Now, typically when a customer calls in, it may be what I call a problem opportunity, a problem with an opportunity, right? So in today's world, there are a lot of businesses calling their vendors and calling people that they do business with saying, hey, Listen, it's tight, man. It's going to be tight for us to issue this 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand to you, you know, for, for, for last month or whatever it is, whether it be $10, $100, $100,000, you know, is there anything you can do to help us, right? So they're not, they're typically calling into customer service. So a great SOP for you to have now, just to keep it super relevant in this world, is the SOP that goes, that writes out, customer calls in, information is entered to the CRM. CRM has a workflow that goes to sales that alerts the sales rep to reach out to them and say, hey, I understand that you called into uh, customer service. I'm Brandon. You know, if you know them, then obviously you're going to reach out and say, hey, I see that you called in customer service. If you don't know them, assign yourself as the rep, assign yourself as the authority that's going to help them. Right. So that's an SOP, a standard operating procedure around a simple process just like that. It's the same thing in finance or invoicing. It, you know, look to look to now more than ever, especially in this remote environment. Again, set these SOPs up because the SOPs are very similar to the instructions, the guidelines, what is expected. You know, everything that I've been talking about on this webinar, it all ties together. It is like cooking, right? So when I cook, I get the stove. I put this, I'm not a huge cook, but when I do, I cook terrible food. You don't want any of my food, but it's okay. But what I do is you put the pan on, you turn the heat on, you put the oil in, you put, you, you grab the ingredients, some onion, some salt, some pepper, some protein, some chicken, you know, maybe some veg, you know, but what I make in my recipe may be different to yours, but everything in this webinar that we're going over are the core ingredients you need all of these ingredients if you're going to have a successful remote plan. So I'm hoping at this point that we're starting to pull this stuff all together here and you start to see that what I talked about with action item one, action item two, action item three is all starting to blend together and make sense. 
And I'd say, go through this, listen to this again, write down your own notes, and this will all ring a bell, uh, uh, ring a bell. Hopefully it, will, hopefully it will bring a bell to you, but it will ring a bell to you. And then you can spin this and make your own presentation and present that to your group or go through Go Scales and have them present it for you as well. So that's the SOP piece. Let's go to less meetings, right? I started off this conversation with- hey, Brandon. We're, we're, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, want, I wanted to jump in because- Sure. Uh, based on what you were talking about there, because you started talking about CRMs and, and um, we have a, a question that is totally uh, right on point with that from Courtney, which is what are some of your favorite CRM cloud systems to use? Okay, so I there are a ton of them out there and it depends on your use. One of the most widely used is obviously Salesforce, right? Uh, we run on copper.com for for the one business line that I'm involved in. Um, there's, there's uh, you know, there's, there's the, the options are limitless, but I would say that the, the two main ones, or, or actually the, the main one that most people go with is Salesforce. If you know of any others that are, that are mainstream and necessary, I'd be more than happy to listen to them. But like I said, uh, salesforce.com or copper.com are two of, Two, two of the main highlights. Um, there are also several um, more marketing platforms, right? Like a HubSpot, um, uh, Infusionsoft, you know, those, those types of platforms. But as for the overall um, digestion of, of content, um, you know, really most people go with Salesforce. So that's kind of a, one, one of the mainstream um, answers to that. I know people are looking for something else, people, but, but I would say check out copper.com, especially if you're on, if, if you're on G suite, check them out as well. Um, so, but going back to less meetings, more meetings is not better. Less is more. We're all on meetings all day long with customers, right? The more internal meetings we have, what it does is it creates what I call lumpy, lumpy output. Just like when you have lumpy income, that means that you make a lot in one month, like, like an accounting firm may make a lot around now because it's accounting season's ending. Now they is actually extended, but accounting firms do a lot of work in these, past, in these previous three months. And so subsequently, they bill a lot of work. That's called lumpy income. And what happens is when you start doing all of these different types of meetings, it creates distractions. So you want to either stay consistent with your meetings. If you're going to do a meeting, do it at the same time every day so that reps know to schedule other things around those meeting times, right? You don't want to say, oh, do a meeting here at nine o'clock this day, 10 o'clock this day. 11 o'clock this, this day, be consistent with everything that you do, especially in the remote. There's nothing that's going to help you out more than consistency. And this goes back to action item number one, set guidelines, set expectations. You're expected to be there on time, right? If we host a meeting, we're going to keep you for 15 minutes. When it comes to meetings as a leadership team, it's imperative to stick to the times. If you say it's from nine to nine 15, then end at 9.15. Like it's, it's not just go on all day and hear yourself speak. You know, be specific with your times and make sure you're early. Everybody's logged in. You've checked your technology. You've run through the, you've run through the gaps and you're able to deliver the content in a timely, efficient manner in less time. So you're going to need to review less or you're going to need to review more, more content in less time. Let me go to the next actionable tip. You need to be able to track data, right? So who is doing what? And this leads us back to the CRM. So in Salesforce, you can track activity, you know, and again, we're not tracking to micromanage. We're tracking because we want to see what activities drive the best results. So any of these tools that you use out there, make sure they have the tracking ability to review productivity plus results. So if you have a rep that's supposed to be calling out, you're going to want to have some type of automated system which tracks those outbound calls. 
So you can see, okay, Brandon is making, you know, 20 calls a day. Out of those 20 calls, he's he's on the phone with each person for 10 minutes. And subsequently, out of those 20 people he talks to, he's signing up one order out of those 20. So we know for every 20 people he talked to, he talks to, he speaks with, he's going to sign up one order. Where Stephen is talking to 40 people for three minutes each and isn't signing up any orders. So you see where I'm going with this. When you can track the data, when you can look at the results, then you can see what activities and and what Brandon is talking about that's driving re results versus Steven, who's driving no results. But if we don't have activity, it's all based on hearsay. And you may think that because Steven is doing 40 calls and raises his hand, how many calls in, in, the, in the team meeting? Steven, how many calls did you do? 40. Great, Brandon, how many did you do? 20. But you're not asking how many sales did you close? It's really irrelevant. Because activity, it's not based upon activity. We need to focus the activities that drive the results, not the activity that drives the activity, especially in the remote world. So be very cognizant of what you're actually focusing on and use every single type of data tracking tool that you can. Now, the, the, and again, I'll repeat this. This is not to track the actual employees. This is to track how you can better enhance your positioning of your product and service and delivering the best customer service that you can and best outbound reach that you can, lead generation that you can through your data, right? Everything that we do moving forward is gonna be based off of data right? because we're not gonna be able to read these social cues from people. We're not gonna see that, that, that Jacob shows up late to work because he walks in the office every day but a half hour, a, a half hour late and is a high performer still. You know, because he's he's smart, he's quick, he does everything good, and we we know that's that um, you know Amanda maybe you know comes in a half hour early, but doesn't deliver half of the information or half of the sales that th that the other person does. You know, it, it works both ways, and the only way we can figure that out is data. So use your technology. Going back to the actionable tip item earlier, use your technology to help deliver and drive better decisions moving forward. So reporting, I just kind of touched on this a second ago as well. Um, you know, it's good to be able to track, but you have to be able to report. And I'll just share on this for a second. If there's one thing that takes up more time for a person in a leadership role, it is creating reports, right? Because I want to say water flows downstream, but but the the information and water flow does flow downstream, but information in a company flows upstream, <laughs> right? So it's it's going up. So as the different levels of management and as the different levels of leadership, they're all tasked to create these reports. So ultimately, you know, 10, 15, 20 people can sit in a room and then make decisions upon how they're going to drive the business moving forward. The easier the CRM that you use is to extract or whatever tools you're using or technology you're using to automatically generate reports based off of the data that's extracted, it's going to make everybody's life easier. If you have to go into your system and extract that data into an Excel spreadsheet and then cut and paste that information into another Excel spreadsheet and then sort and filter as you grow the business. And in this remote time, there's limited time. I say, I say working remote's great. Everybody that I talk to has wanted to work re remote for the past 10 years, right? They're like, I can work remote. The people that I talk to today, the people that I were talking to this morning, were saying they're working harder and longer than ever in the remote environment. Because we're not all there, like Dan had mentioned, walking over to somebody and tapping them on the shoulder and saying, hey, you know, can, can I have this information or when are you going to have this information? The process goes back to standard operating procedures. What is the standard operating procedure upon us delivering results? What are the expectations? What are the guidelines 
that we need to follow to get upper management and upper leadership the reports that they need based upon the data that we've gathered. So I, I really hope this stuff is, is, is relating to you in some form or fashion. Like I said, it may not be relating to you right now, but it will sink in over time. This is like a fireworks show, right? You look up, you see these fireworks, but the real beauty of it may not sink in for a couple of days. So come back, watch this again, take notes. If you're not taking notes, you see me, I'm taking notes here, right? So I'm as much engaged in learning as, as anybody out there. And you, Brandon, any, yeah, go ahead. Nick. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of jump in here too, because kind of sort of related, maybe it's a counterpoint, I should say, uh, to tracking progress and tracking results and things like that. Um, with a remote team, I think one of the things that often gets forgotten is culture and the uh, the effect of working remotely on morale and uh, and employee attitudes and positivity and uh, especially if it's if you're in a situation where you've been working in a physical office uh, uh, for a long time uh, or if the team is new to this, kind of situation, if the manager is new to this uh, kind of scenario. Um, so I wanted to ask your recommendations about culture and how to keep it positive and how to monitor people to make sure that your team is feeling good about the situation and, and that they feel heard. Uh, because if there's two things that like I've kind of felt are keys to having a, a happy worker uh, and a satisfied worker, it's it's communication and it's inclusion. It's making sure that the lines of communication are open and you know how to communicate and you also know when not to communicate <laughs> and like when your manager will not communicate with you, like after a certain amount of time, after 5 p.m., don't call me, don't text me. Um, but also inclusion, like making sure that you're uh, included in virtual meetings or that you're on the right uh, chat board or, or Slack channel or you know that you're still being heard even though you're not being seen All right what are your what are your thoughts on that I, I I think it is so so important to feel a part of right even if we take away all this all this business stuff it, as a human I started this off with with saying I'm, I'm a human whatever but it's going to everybody wants to feel a part of Everybody wants to be on the team. You remember going back to gym class, raising your hand, hey, hey, pick me, pick me, pick me. Everybody wants to have some type of higher meaning, um, inclusion, you know. Um, and there are several different ways to do that. And in the remote world, it is it's it's more difficult quite frankly, because before you say, oh, let's all go out to eat. Right? Let's let's go grab lunch or let's do a bowling or axe throwing or kickball or, you know, climbing or walking or dinner or happy hour, you know, whatever they are. But we don't have access to that. So what we need to do today is use technology, right? Such as, such as GoSkills LMS, right? Use a platform like, like you offer. Have everybody take those classes and then come back, right? You can check to see who's taking them, who's not. Are they just breezing through them? Are they not? If they are, then you can address it and say, hey, listen, I, you know, I saw that, you know, most of these classes have tracking tools and mechanisms in place to, to slow people down so that they review all the, so they, they make sure they review all the content. And so that leadership can say, hey, listen, Brandon didn't finish his course. We asked him to finish this course. Why isn't he doing this? It can also give hints as to um, an, an engaged employee versus an unengaged employee. And it's, it's much easier to get people back on track when we understand what their passion level is towards what they're doing. So if you're not able to get that physical appearance of, hey, listen, this person is disengaged. He, he or she doesn't care what, what we're doing. They're not involved. And you're not using technology such as a GoSkills LMS, it's going to be difficult to track. And it goes back to the technology, which I mentioned a couple of times ago. Use the technology you have 
to gather insights, to gather data, to make more educated business decisions for your employees and for your 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 company, right? And again, this this goes back to you know I'm kind of I keep reverting back to to what I previously spoke about. But if you use a Go Skills LMS and everybody takes the class on culture, and then you host a meeting with that group with those ten people, or you keep the group small, you host a meeting with those ten people, and you go around and each person can share if they want to, right? It's completely optional for three, four, five minutes on what their takeaway was. Now you're going to see when you do that, whether it's a Teams meeting, whether it's a, um, a go, go to webinar, whatever it is, right? You get everybody on there, you let them share. You're gonna see that 10 people watched and listened and engaged on the same content at different times. And they all learned something different. And each thing that they learned may be a value to somebody else. But I know with me, Persistence wears down resistance, and I need to hear things multiple ways from multiple different sources to learn the best. So use an LMS and use your peers. Use the peers to help teach each other after, right? This is not like a one and done type thing when, when it comes to learning. Use the technology, track it, monitor it, see who's doing what, why they're doing it, make sure everybody's on track so that you can have educated conversations. So I hope that makes sense. I know that makes sense to you, Dan, coming from the Go Skills world. But um, so let's go to the next one, the weekly recap. So the weekly recap is not to be sent out on Saturday morning as a leader saying, hey, listen, I'm the leader here. I'm the only one working on Saturday morning, right? A weekly, a, a weekly recap is just a simple recap of what's going on during that previous week, any highlights, like, hey, um, Steven did this, or and uh, Sally had this success, and we learned this on the on, in Go Skills. You know, we took a we took a class on culture, and here are the takeaways from from our meeting we have. You know, that's making people feel a part of. So you're mentioning you're mentioning different people's names, and people look for their name. You know, and then you're saying, here's what's to, what's to be expected in this next week. You know, we have. Jacob, who's going to present on Tuesday, we we, we have, um, you know, India running the meeting on 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 Wednesday. We we have one of our vendors that's going to come in and help on Thursday and sh share some experiences. So this is this is all about just an all encompassing recap of what's been done, and then a short snippet, a short tease of what's to be expected, and you know. With the with the recaps, the more you can use your tools. This is this is why it's important to use a help desk tool, a CRM tool, a marketing tool, because you can extract that data into easy reports. When you're making this recap email, you can just go into each one of those systems, or they're already in your email, or they're in some consolidated report through like a data box or something else like that, where you can go in easily look in one console and see, oh yes, these are the things. Because if you try to remember them in your head, you're going to forget all the important stuff. Because I know in my head, and I know probably in most people's heads, that there's only two, three, four things that I can that I can remember before they start overriding themselves. So again, use your technology, use your tools, use the data, and use your resources to create the best experience that you can for all of your remote employees. So I'll kind of end with that. I want to leave 10, 10 minutes at the end here for conversation pieces. Um, I'm just thinking of like one, one or two. Let, let, let me just read three, re, read through these real quick too, before we end. So I, there's only 11 of them. I'm just going to, I'm just going to fly through them. Set the guidelines, set the expectations, provide the proper technology, provide the training. Focus on results. Provide clear instructions. Set up standard operating procedures. Do more with less meetings. Track the data. Provide detailed reporting. Use a GoSkills LMS or another learning platform, whatever you're most comfortable with. I, I always recommend GoSkills. Also, send a weekly recap. 
Those are the 11 actionable tips, right? And I know we can go on and do another 300, 400, and you may say, oh, Brandon missed the biggest one. But the biggest one to you may not be the biggest one to me. But if you can share your biggest one in the chat or what you think we can help out with, please let me know. So I'll send it back to you, Dan. And whatever you want to do from here, I'm I'm totally open with. Oh, let's go grab a beer. There's a, well, oh, yeah, no, you know what? Social distancing. Let's not do that. <laughs> virtual. Right but uh, actually, we do have a question that asks about one of the issues that comes up. And I'm going to put it right on screen. This is from Mark, uh, who's watching on YouTube. Some people don't do well in a remote work environment. Any tips for identifying that during the hiring process? Woo! Mark, 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 man. You're testing my knowledge. <laughs> that, is a, that, is a, that is a great thing. Um, there's a lot of questions. That's there's a there's a that's a loaded question. We can we can talk about that one for the next hour, but we won't. I will try to answer it as directly as possible. Um, I always ask questions like, did you do any online school? Depending upon age, you know, what's what's your level of um, what what type of experience do you have working remotely? Um, can you share that with me? Um, what have you, have you taken any online classes? Did, did you do any, did, did, is, is there, is there anything that you like about working online versus not working online? If we were to be remote full time, are you okay with that? What type of personality do you have? Do you have a personality where you need to feel included all the time? Do, do you have a personality? And obviously your, the answer is going to be yes. Do you have a, uh, is there an opportunity, um, for you to become a leader? Like how, how do you, how do you foresee yourself? Like I always try to spin it back on them and, and ask them like, how do you see yourself moving up the ladder in our, in our corporate environment? How do you see yourself doing your job um, in a remote environment? You know, and that will tell a lot like, well, I really haven't thought about that. Or, or if you have somebody that kind of just jumps in there and like, well, I've worked, I've worked for remote my whole life. Um, I'm used to that environment. I took classes. You know, I, I it, it's tough to really um, give highly specific questions, but I would just the more you listen, the better off you. I think you're going to be. I think it's going to come down to to asking the right questions around the um, around the remote environment, and then understanding and forming new questions based off of what you hear. But there's there's actually no definitive answer to that. I mean, you can run through a couple scenarios, whereas, um, you know, what, what kind of guidelines are you expecting or what's your expectation for a day to look like? Uh, okay. So I always put them in their shoes. Okay. So you're, 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 you're hired. You understand the expectations. You understand the guidelines. Um, what's your day look like? You know, I, what does your, what does your day look like? Do you have a dog? Do you have a wife? Do you have kids? Do you have here? What just set me, set up the day for me and you'll get a pretty good sense of um of of how their life is and how they manage stuff i think working remote really comes down to being successful working remotely comes down to discipline and being able to manage your time properly so if they come from a, a disciplined background like a military type background or anything else like that i think they'll, they'll probably have a good chance to ex exceed i'm not saying that if you don't you won't because I don't have a military background, and I've exceeded it in 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 the in the remote in, environment. Um, but yeah, I would just ask a lot of questions. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention too, Brandon, was like I always get asked, "What do you like most about working remotely? Like, what is it that you really like?" And I know for me, it's the flexibility. You know, I'm, I'm married, I got yeah. a couple of kids, and and being able to to have that flexible schedule come and go, go to those things, go to the events, go to the doctor, go shopping if I need to. Um, but know that I have that flexibility and getting that, you know, uh, getting that feedback from the employee or the employer on what they think of working in a remote environment is beneficial because that understanding gets out there. But the other thing I was thinking too was build in remote tasks to the hiring process. You know, if it's, if it's all in person and they all come into an office and see you, that's all well and good, but get them on a Zoom call, have them submit something through a Google doc, you know, give them a, a process that's online to follow and see, 
how easy it is for them to accomplish it or or how difficult it is are they are they having basic questions about everyday remote tools well that's okay if they're you know maybe new to it but work with them and see how quickly they can overcome those remote tasks and they may be a quick learner uh, or you may discover that they really really don't know or they're not comfortable with these tools uh, you know if it takes them a half hour to set up for zoom or something maybe they really haven't done any of this at all before i mean so maybe look for those red red flags um and uh and actually all right so this is ringing true for for raxit i had this hiring situation conundrum exactly two hours ago i like uh -huh. the background Perfect. background environment check so yeah you get an idea for what uh what people value and what they're um what they're really thinking about working remotely um I, I there was one more question that i saw that i thought was really good and, and probably a good good way to tie this up let me hit you with it this is from ryan what are some of the biggest challenges that you encounter when moving your team to remote so maybe you're in a physical office maybe you're sitting all together but now you're remote what are the biggest challenges that come up here and maybe uh how do you solve them? This is something easy to answer in one minute. Go ahead. You uh, got yes. this, Brandon. Oh man. <laughs> you know, set the guidelines, set the expectations. Just just let 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 people know, hey, listen, we're all in this together. You know, get their buy-in. Like who you know, we 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 are all the same thing that that great leaders, great lead. I would just say this great leaders lead in in their biggest times of strife. Great leaders rise to the top now. And great leaders rise to the top through great communication. Communicate crystal clear and not getting them on and preaching to them on a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting for an hour. Getting on, writing down some notes, being direct, being short, be, being absolutely precise and critically clear with your communication. I, I don't think I, I think I did that in less than a minute. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, one of the things that really hits me about that difference going from that physical team to remote is that, um, you know, not everyone's not on the same page, not on the same level anymore. I don't know how to exactly to say it, but, you know, when you're in an office together, you know where everyone is, you know, everyone's sitting like every, everyone knows where to go and you can find everyone. Right. When you're in a remote environment, now the technology might be different. Now your your uh, your availability might be different. Maybe even your Wi-Fi might be different. But no matter what the differences are, you're absolutely right. Communication and leadership from the from the manager, the team leader, being able to to communicate effectively, but also reliably, and make sure you know you ask those questions. Are you able to connect? I mean. Is the technology working for you? Are you still able to do your job now that you're at home rather than in the office? Uh, even you know, like the simplest things like connecting to Wi-Fi. I mean, if your Wi-Fi goes down at home, man, you're, you're messed up for the whole day. But um, anyway, now these are, uh, these are great tips, man. And I appreciate you coming on here. Um, I want to invite everyone to, to connect with Brandon because we are, reaching the end of the uh, the webinar here. Uh, Brandon Schaefer, if you want to connect with him, you can find them at simplebusinesshelp.com. And uh, I can I can put that URL up on the screen. Uh, also on uh, LinkedIn, you said LinkedIn is a good place to find you. Yeah, Brandon, if you there. search Brandon Schaefer, Philadelphia, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up number one, you know, so. Nice. All right. So, uh, that's our time for today. Brandon, thanks so much for coming in and, and uh, joining us and sharing all that expertise. Those tips are really great and uh, they're going to help a lot of people right now for sure. Uh, I love it. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to coming back again and, and, and taking a deeper dive. All right. Uh, everyone, thanks for joining us on YouTube or wherever you're watching this. Uh, connect with us. Let us know if you have questions. Connect with Brandon. Uh, thanks so much for watching and keep an eye out for the next webinar that we have here at GoSkills. We'll see you later.